Zeno Goku versus Sun Wukong. In a matchup between two mortals who became gods with one inspiring the other, as one travels to the west defeating gods, as the other travels through time surpassing them. With one being born from a rock bathed in the energies of the sun and moon, with eyes that can pierce the skies of heaven. With the other being a time patroller worth throughout an infinite history that trunks overseas, with some of the weakest characters being able to hold up all of creation, still regard Zeno Goku as the strongest person you could possibly imagine. So what would happen if they were face to face? Who would win? Zeno Goku or Sun Wukong? Sun Wukong, a deity that possesses immense strength with an unwavering love for life and wisdom. He has taken a solemn vow to never succumb to death regardless of how many monsters, demons, or gods descend upon him. On his journey to the west, Sun Wukong achieved multiple layers of immortality by eating pills of longevity, practicing Tao, and eating an entire garden of heavenly peaches, with each of these peaches granting another layer of immortality. Sun Wukong exists the extraordinary ability to shapeshift into any he desires and has a mastery of the 72 transformations which allows him to have 72 lives. This remarkable aspect of his power means defeating him requires a daunting task of ending an immortal existence 72 times over. Even when confronted with the most extreme measures such as all of heaven's resistance including the formidable demoralizing furnace only acts as an augment to his overwhelming strength. Sun Wukong's remarkable abilities extend even further as he possesses the unique technique to replicate his opponent's strength. This incredible skill was predominantly displayed in his epic battle with the deity Prince Nocha, when Nocha transformed into a formidable state, growing three additional heads and six arms. Sun Wukong responded with laughter and effortlessly matched this newfound power. His capability to mimic his opponent's abilities knows no bounds as it solely relies on his imagination. In his quest to find a suitable weapon, Sun Wukong boldly stormed into the Dragon King's palace and seized the Rui Jingu Bang, a magical staff innated with the design to measure the depths of the ocean and possesses the extraordinary ability to change its size at will, much like Sun Wukong himself. It can shrink to the size of a needle or expand to pierce the very clouds of heaven, which is what Sun Wukong did with his eyes alone after just being born into this world. Sun Wukong has 84,000 and hairs on his body granting him the ability to transform them into virtually anything he desires. This includes the capacity to create weapons, duplicates of his adversaries, and even replicas of himself. This ability makes battling Sun Wukong a challenge that defies repetition, as it essentially means confronting an almost infinite number of opponents, all of whom can instantaneously match your power and possesses numerous layers of immortality and grows stronger with each attempt at killing them. As Sun Wukong gets even stronger, he's able to defeat a staggering 600 gods with 28 of them being constellations. He was able to lift the entire infinite Milky Way galaxy over his head and even held up all of Mount Sumer which is described in Buddhism as a mountain that holds all of existence and even defeated entities that could destroy all of existence with a whistle. During his journey to the west, Sun Wukong achieved a state of perfect enlightenment, transcending into the remainder stage of Nirvana. This stage of nirvana transcends all notions and constraints, existing as a limitless, boundless entity that surpasses all limitations and concepts. Well, what did you expect from the god who demanded to be formally acknowledged as the great sage equal to heaven? Within Buddhism, there's a concept known as the Buddhist Cosmo. This idea uses seven physical and temporal dimensions to symbolize the seven Samuric realms, with the incomplete stage of Nirvana being inaccessibly above all seven worlds. Life, death, and reincarnation are all eternal existences that make up the karmic cycle. When one transcends Samsura, they are no longer constrained by these conceptions, since every concept of life and death, including dimensions, would remain within it. Achieving this level of power, Sun Wukong has now acquired Atman, which according to Hindu and Buddhist philosophy, Atman is the ultimate state of existence and the primary goal of the Buddha. Atman is the universal self above all things in the chains of existence known as Moksha. Atman is beyond all cosmic truths including identity, personality, and even existence itself known as Gwentama Dharma Sutra. Existing above mathematics, dualism, Taoism, and all other notions of existence including space and time. But we're not done yet. At the end of his epic journey, Sun Wukong stands before the Buddha himself and achieves the pinnacle of Nirvana, transcending to the complete stage of enlightenment. 
In this transcendent state, he transformed into the sage over heaven, the fighting Buddha, Buddha Wukong. This profound realization of Nirvana propelled him into an unparalleled level of power, surpassing even the Bodhisattvas who had attained the remainder stage of Nirvana, and it is even stated that Buddhas are beyond their comprehension, as Bodhisattvas are part of the transcendent. In this state, he stands above all worlds, never returning to anything lower, meaning an infinite hierarchy of outerversal beings with Wukong looking down on all of them, reaching high outerversal strength and becoming all-knowing, all-powerful and omnipresent, the great sage over heaven, the monkey king, the fighting Buddha, Sun Wukong. So how can the inspired beat the original? Xeno Goku, an alternate iteration of Goku featured in the spin-off series Dragon Ball Heroes, encompassing both the anime and the video game adaptation. Following his adventures in Dragon Ball Z, the movies, GT, and even the initial stages of Dragon Ball Super, he became a time patroller tasked with preserving the integrity of all the infinite timelines and safeguarding the entirety of existence itself. He embarks on journeys through history, engaging in fierce battles against the Dark Empire, making him the guardian of history. Xeno Goku working through the time nest is where all history is stored and this is where people like Kronoa live and oversee everything in history. Although she would get completely obliterated by pretty much everyone in Dragon Ball Heroes, she's still extremely powerful in full perspective. While Zeno can destroy entire timelines, Kronoa was actually able to merge multiple of these timelines together casually. She's completely unhinged from time itself and has the strength with her bare hands alone to hold up all of creation. Demigra, an interdimensional demon stuck in the crack of time and plan to destroy all possible paths of history, with statements regarding there to be an infinite or uncountable amount of them. With Dragon Ball timelines housing realms like Otherworld that have been explicitly stated to transcend the mortal universe indefinitely, and there are even realms that hold the Tsukuruku space and hyperbolic time chamber, which have been stated to have no concept of space and time existing there. Alluding to the idea of Platonism, a philosophical perspective positing the existence of abstract objects above infinite transcendental dimensions, as these concepts are essentially the source of which everything originates. Destroying this would grant you outerversal strength, with destroying an infinite amount of them making you infinite outerversal. As previously stated, Demigra intended to obliterate all of these constructs to reduce them to absolute nothingness, including the time nest that exists external to all of them as Dragon Ball seems to follow the many worlds interpretation, possibly making each of these outerversal constructs that exist within each of the timelines transcend each other, making the time nest itself high outerversal. This places Demigra in a league beyond characters like Meki Kabura who can devour all the infinite timelines and regenerate endlessly. Demigra even absorbs Toki Toki, a bird of necessary existence and responsible for creating all of the infinite histories, granting him power beyond human comprehension and fate itself. However, despite this incredible power, Demigra ultimately proves to be insignificant, as he's easily overpowered by Xeno Goku in his base form alone. Existing outside of everything exists Beats World or the real world, which perceives the entire Dragon Ball Heroes cosmology as fiction. It's important to note that these distinctions are not merely related to higher geometrical dimensions in the real world, as both the video game and the real world share the same spatial dimensions, length, width, and height. In the Dragon Ball Heroes video game, characters like Beat must assume avatars to enter this game, signifying there's a fundamental difference in conceptual reality. This conceptual existence is beyond the spatial dimensions of the game, as they share the same spatial coordinates, just on a different conceptual plane. Consequently, even an infinite dimensional being existing within the Dragon Ball Heroes game would still be conceptually closer to the game variant than any real world counterpart. This would make the real world in Dragon Ball Heroes high outer versal or a boundless realm, as Demigra gains a third form that can threaten all of Beat's world, as Demigra now believes he has the power to end all of creation itself. But Xeno Goku has other plans. Xeno Goku defeats Demigra without even transforming because if he were to let his power extend to his forms past Super Saiyan, he would literally obliterate all of the infinite timelines, 
just by transforming alone. With Xenogoku being stronger than Celius, who can reset all of existence including Beat's world, and surpasses the fusions of Super Saiyan 4 and Blue Gogeta, who were individually stated to have enough power to kill the Omni King and Dragon Ball heroes, and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta who can defeat Dark Omega Shenron with one finger who can destroy all of existence by wishing it to be so. With Zeno surpassing the gods of destruction who themselves can reduce Beat's world into nothingness, with the fusions having power that transcends dimensions, as Zeno Goku even was able to fight against Fu who transcended to the charisma world that views even Beat's world as fiction. Being connected to the Xenoverse games gives him a plethora of hacks such as boundary manipulation meaning there's nothing he cannot achieve, and even makes the impossible possible. He even has a causality which is being above cause and effect itself as Demigra has had the ability to change fate and probability, and we know how that went. He has the ability to control life, matter, space, reality, probability, and even has conceptual manipulation. And if I listed all of his broken abilities, we would literally be here for days. Let's just say the man is immune and has control over pretty much anything you could possibly imagine. He has the ability to create miracles or destroy them. This battle is extremely close and depending on the interpretation you go with, it can lean in both of their favors. On paper, Xeno Goku actually surpasses Sun Wukong in strength, as Xeno Goku in only his base form is able to fight against people who have boundless strength. And this isn't including any of his other transformations that makes him billions of times stronger. However, if you think Sun Wukong has the ability to copy and mimic the strength of those conceptually stronger than him, then this might turn out bad for Xeno Goku. As although Xeno Goku can get billions of times stronger, he could be potentially facing an entire infinite army. However, if you think Xeno Goku's ability to change fate and probability itself, he could actually make it so that these clones will never come to fruition. However, then again, Sun Wukong could just copy this effect and mimic Xeno Goku's strength to perfection and make an entire infinite army that he has to deal with. So in the end, I guess this one's up in the air. But no matter who you have your money on, I guess it really doesn't matter. Because the winner is Goku. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Kaze. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And if you guys did, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And actually tell me down below who you think would win between Xeno Goku and Sun Wukong. This is extremely close, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. And please, please, please join the Discord server and the TikTok. We're trying to reach 200k and that'd be greatly appreciated. And go ahead and look out for a Dragon Ball GT versus Dragon Ball Super video coming out really soon. All right, that's it. Love you guys. See ya.